Okay, hi, I'm Steve Wallace. I am going to be teaching, hopefully, acting for theatre. I'm going to be focusing on anger because that's fun. A um, couple of things uh, about these and about me. I'm a half-functioning autistic. I was born with a speech impediment, which makes acting quite hard. Um, but I'm one of those people that takes things way too seriously. So if one of you guys uh, tells me to go jump in the lake or kill myself in the comments, I probably will. So please try to avoid that. You know, haters hate, but don't hate too much. So, video started. Grab your attention. Look, it's a porno magazine. No, it's actually success with how... Impediment success with house plants, but uh, well, it's just as interesting. So I looked at a couple of ways of uh, making videos interesting and popular online. I looked at uh, top subscribers like uh, Smosh and uh, Lenny William Johnson, and what I found out is that with things like what I just did with the plant thing, help and pain helps out. No sound effects, look, ow. No, I'm singing this, I didn't. Sheesh. Um, and uh, being weird can help. Uh, but I don't know if it actually has helped yet, because uh, I haven't seen this. That's another thing, I'm speaking to you from in the past. <laughs> the last thing I found was um, throwing babies out walls. Black. Doll. So just. <sighs> Here's hoping this is close enough. <laughs> now, down to business. Acting. Acting. Theatre. I chose theatre before film because uh, theatre's definitely uh, more fun uh, thing, certainly at an amateur level. And I'm assuming I'm talking to. Amateurs, intermediate uh, level actors, or, or just maybe people who want to do it as a hobby. Um, these are completely improvised. Uh, I've got no teleprompter, it's just a part of uh, games uh, telling me. Uh, yeah. So, theatre, anger. What? What comprises anger? Uh, lots of things. Pain. When you get angry, I mean, when you get really angry, it hurts. And it, that's something that's really interesting, because not a lot of people like getting angry. Um, they feel it robs them of some kind of quality. I personally, I pride myself on, on dealing with anger in other ways. Often I, I'd speak quietly rather than shouting. Um, but when you really lose it, it, it hurts. So. You, you're going to be wanting to bring lots of emotions into that anger, so it's not flat, it's, it's sort of moving back, you can't stay in one place when you're angry on the stage. And uh, so maybe half crying, maybe a tear, and uh, crying on stage. So how the hell do you do that? Um, you've got to really feel this emotion. There are a number of ways you can do that. Um, for example, when you take on a character, you have to understand that character fully. So, do your research. Just uh, find out all you can about that character. And uh, maybe uh, one of my methods is live a life as that character. Live a day of your life as you think your character would. And that will help a lot with sinking into the model because to act any emotion from the point of view of your character you've got to be coming from that side from the, your character's point of view so when you're really angry just take five minutes to just build it up inside here and start to feel just really angry you can use whatever method you like to do this you can Think about someone you really hate. You can think of uh, Miss Gamble, if you like. You can, uh... You don't... You don't know. Right. Stage presence. On the stage, 
when you walk out and you're angling, you're not going to be walking like this. Unless it's a twist anger. Mm. You're not going to be walking like this. You might, but I mean, if you. Yeah. Um, you might be hesitant. You might be more focused. But when you're when you really quite angry, there's sort of a, a hesitance in your voice because you're trying to control emotions that are really. Really hard to control. <sighs> yeah. Um, so stage presence is one thing. Um, actually feeling that emotion is the other. A lot of it will depend on the skill. Yeah, because when when I say I'm going to talk about anger, there's so many different types of anger. There's suppressed anger, which is it's basically when you're angling with someone in a room, but you're, you're not showing it. And that needs to come across in body language, in, in the way you face them, in, in the way you talk to them. Maybe you don't want to look directly at them, maybe you're sort of going like this. Yeah, that's fine. And maybe you st their back's turned, sort of going, I hate you. Don't, don't do that. Unless you want to, I don't know what you're doing! Okay, um... Okay, um, practicalities of anger. All to all, you're not going to be throwing your weight around, you're not going to be in an actual fight scene. You're going to be using dialogue to express emotion, which is the most obvious thing in the face of the Uranus. <laughs> Yeah, I like my own stuff. So, with dialogue, with practice, I'd advise taking an extract from... Think of an actor that you admire greatly, then find a film where they are really angry. Or, don't pick an actor you think is hot, like, I don't know, King Knightley, Angelina Jolie, Jason Stath. Don't... You know, pick an actor that you can relate to on a level, like they use your methods, or you can see yourself playing that role. Like, uh, for me, it's James McAvoy in Atonement. He is a fantastic actor. So, those of you who don't know, he played uh, Professor X in X-Men... Uh, coach? Or... I don't know. Um, but... His last, um, one of his last scenes in Atonement, uh, where Talis has gone back to apologise in the fictional scene, he does that so well, and it's the way the scene builds. With anger, you, you need to control it to a certain extent. You need to judge it very well, because it's very easy to overdo. We can all shout as loud as we want! <laughs> You know, but it's not useful to do that. You've got to build the scene and build the anger throughout the character, whether it's a small part or a large part. And uh, I'll do the atonement bit for you now. Oh, I want to do... I'm doing the wrong scene. I, I did a theatre production like three days ago, so I'm doing lines from that, no, no apology. Be quite honest with you. I'm torn. Between my desire to break your neck here, or take you from you downstairs. Do you have any idea what it's like in jail? Of course you don't! Tell me, did it give you pleasure to think of me inside? And yet you did nothing about it! Do you think I assaulted your cousin? Did you think it then? And what has made you so certain now that I did not? Good up. How old 
Do you have to read to know the difference between right and wrong? Well, you know, 18. Do you have to be 18 before you can bring yourself to admit to a lie? There are soldiers of 18 deemed old enough to be left to die by the side of the road. Did you know that? Well, five years ago, you didn't care about telling the truth. You had all your family. You just assumed that for all my education, I was still a little man and a servant, still not to be trusted. Thanks to your lies, they are able to close ranks and throw me the fucking walls! You can be feeling lightheaded. Uh, I am, after that. But, it's the way that scene builds. So, you've got to have inspiration as an actor. You've got to find something that fuels you. It's like... Poetry. People don't just write it, they're inspired by something or, or they're roused by something or events in their life just spark and suddenly it's this flush of emotion. You've got to, it's the same sort of passion and conviction that is needed with acting when <laughs> and doing it constantly. People think it's just a, a hobby or it's a cop out. You know, I had tons of people in my drama school, when you at school, uh, who were there just because I thought it was a cop-out, and that really annoyed me, because I didn't care, they couldn't act, and they didn't try. But for me, it was only a passion, so I took it further. Um, I suppose it's because uh, I wanted to escape from uh, my life, which has been turd so far. Uh, well, that's a lie, actually. But I, I was a little kid who sat in the corner, who you guys kicked. Yeah, I hate you guys. Another clinic tip, uh, well, I think it's clinic, getting into character. Uh, every day, I, I talk to myself every day. Uh, just, I get up and I do a random scene just because I, I feel like it. And that helps. That really builds you up as an actor. Just doing these random assorted scenes that take you through a random spectrum of emotions, that really helps. So, talking to yourself, thumbs up. Um, people may think it's weird, but we're all weird, so. But, 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 but. <laughs> Anger isn't in here. Oh. It's more in here. It's in your body language entirely. Like, it's not, not like fear. Fear can be done with voice a lot more because often you're not running scared. You're, you're more sort of subtly scared and that can be uh, d done with the voice a lot more. Maybe you're a bit more hesitant and you're nervous about something. <laughs> Like when you go on stage and, and your legs start shaking or, or something and you just, you don't want to be there. You just, people have forced you up there and it's not really helpful. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, so body language, seriously, it can help so much. Depending on your character, you've got to think about placement. I know if you're having drama lessons at school, believe me, at that level, they'll just say, never turn your back to the audience. You must always look at your audience. You can never have your back to them on stage, otherwise their attention goes off of you. Right, guys, is your attention on me right now? Huh? What else are you going to look at in this room? It's dull as hell. I mean, there's a picture over there. There's a guitar there, and there's my... Yeah. So... You're not going to rob the audience of their attention on you by turning around. In, in fact, that can be useful advice. For example, when when you're really angry, you don't... <laughs> so difficult. But it's a matter of judgement. Not... You mustn't turn your back to the audience. It's advisable to include all of the audience in your performance, especially when you're doing speeches, but maybe you're just going to turn your back 
walk out of it and turn around just when I claim that this is ridiculous. Like that. I mean, it can help. It's a matter of judgment. Some people enjoy it, some people don't. But, I mean, if you're com comfortable on stage, then definitely explore the space around you. You're going to have, if you're doing theatre, you're going to have lots and lots of times on rehearse. It's not like film. And take advantage of that time, seriously. When you search your character, become that character. Because theatre is more difficult than film. It's a lot, lot harder. Because there's no stop, can we take that again? You know, it's one time you're going to have all these different skills, you're going to have the improvisation, you're going to have abilities to think on the spot. I'm not helping myself. Okay, so to sum up, acting, theatre, anger. What do you need? You need stage presence, body language. Do you turn away from the audience? at some point, just to give your account to that defensive streak. You might do that, you might not. And subtleties in your voice, little hesitations, little nodes of anger that can build up a character so much because it's more personal when that character is trying to hold back that immense anger. Okay, so you've got all of those. And just use your time. Okay, use whatever your t time you've got to get into your character. You want to search your character. It, it might be a soldier, he might be a lecturer. You know, I mean, and try to think about mannerisms as well. That's the other thing. Because people don't lose mannerisms. They're with them because they've built them up. Like, I, I played a lecturer the other day who got really, really angry. And all the time he's going like this. He's not throwing his arms about, because that, that's not what, what he's learned over on his career. He hasn't uh, spoken to classes saying, All right, guys, you can uh, go, yeah, go, fine, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's goofy, that doesn't work. So he's shouting like this, he's trying to get his point across, he's not, you know, so these little mannerisms and characteristics can really build up a character, especially if you bring them from emotion to emotion. Um, and little subtle quirks. Uh, put one or two into a character. Um, like maybe they're going like this occasionally, or maybe it's a sweep of hair, maybe it's a. I don't know if you can see that, a little twitch. Like uh, David Tennant, Henry Potter, he does the. sort of that. That makes the character seem really realistic and different, and it helps. Um, okay, I've decided that I'm going to end it there. Hopefully I helped. Um, if I didn't, then uh, tell me to kill myself. Why do I say don't? Don't. Please. Just strain your fingers. So I've decided I'm going to end these on... Um, a random tip for any emotion, any stage of acting that I, I think will help. Um, and today's uh, tip is practice. This is a comedy tip. Practice telling jokes that are really not funny at all. But they're not all rude, they're just really not funny. They're just, like, yeah. And try and make them funny. Give you an example. Okie dokie. What did one wall say to the other wall? Meet you at the corner. <laughs> See, none of you are laughing. <laughs> yeah. Still in my life. Um, yeah, so that's it for me. If you like what I do, check out my website and stuff. That'll be in the 
dysfunction down below. Everyone does that. They'll be in the, the everyone knows where it is, but the site is up there. But yeah. Um, anyway, I'm going to do one last thing. Every channel's gonna have haters, so why don't I get some? I've got a fruit cake, and you don't, bitch. Okay, so I don't like the lid from the fruit cake thing on my cat. It... What do you have to say in your defense? You can't lick it from that. You're gonna have to move. You. I I really don't know. This is. Oh, for the love of Pete.